Hey, in this lesson we'll be looking at bass lines, with a range of pointers for making yours more interesting and unique, including a bit of theory with rhythm and pitch advice, as well as getting more technical with devices and effects. I'll be working with a few different Loopmasters bass samples here. Starting with this first one. So I'll load it into Live's sampler instrument, Simpler. And before we get started, I'll just take it down an octave as I want it to be a bit bassier. The problem with doing this, however, is it loses all of the punch at the start of the note. As the transient has gone down an octave, as well as the main body of the bass. So a quick fix for that is to add some filter enveloping, which I do simply by bringing down the filter cutoff to roll off the top end, and then increasing the filter envelope amount. This is pretty standard stuff for a lot of you, no doubt, but very handy to know. And I'll be doing lots more of this kind of thing in my new filtering course coming out soon. And we can now fine tune the cutoff and resonance and filter amount to get it sounding just right. We'll start very simply with the rhythm then. So working with this house beat now, I'll get some notes into this MIDI clip, which is currently looping just two beats or half a bar. So you can hear the bass is now lining up with the kick on each beat. If I add a second note halfway in between, we'll get a quaver or eighth note pattern with double the speed. So with only these semi-quavers, the rhythm is quite uninteresting, which is why you generally want to think about using these swing notes in between, the second and fourth semi-quavers or sixteenth notes on each beat. So the rhythm is much more interesting now, but the constant misalignment of notes is a bit disconcerting. So what you normally want is for some notes to coincide with one and three, lining up with the kick and hat. So you switch between the swing beats and regular beats. So let's try moving this one to the start of the next beat. And if that's a bit hectic, we could drag out the note so it's just one there, and extend the first one across the rest of that beat as well. Or to show you a different example, we could maybe have the first note lining up with our hat on the third sixteenth note, and just drag it out so it's just one note there again. And that's nice, but we could also increase the length of this one. And a good thing about this is that the kick is left entirely on its own, so you won't have to worry about any conflicts between the kick and bass, although these can be sorted with side chaining of course. So this first technique is to try alternating between 16th notes 1 and 3, and 2 and 4 on consecutive beats, to make your rhythm more engaging. Next up, once we've got a nice 2 beat pattern, we might want to add a bit of variation to it. So with this next sample now, And again you can see my pattern is using 16th notes, 2 and 4 on the first beat, and then 3 on the second. So now we'll double it up to the full bar with the duplicate switch. Just to make it a bit more interesting though, I'm going to try making some different changes to it. Now the simplest can sometimes be the best here, as we might want to keep the groove basically intact. So you could try just changing the length of a note. Or if that's a bit short, we could extend it slightly. So just that simple change adds a nice bit of variation to the groove. Another thing you could try is to remove a note somewhere, but we haven't got that many to work with. So in this case, I'll try adding one. The two biggest gaps here are on beats 2 and 4. So I could try adding something on the semi-quaver before the last one. And again, if it's a bit much, I could reduce the length. And it's quite a cool effect if you make it really brief. So we just get the very start. Bringing down the velocity so it's a bit quieter can also be good. As well as velocity, you could also try different octaves. So we could take it down an octave.
which is a bit too low in this case, so we could try up an octave instead. And a touch quieter. And we could also try the note before up an octave as well. And maybe just that one. And if the higher pitch wasn't working for you, you could maybe try just going up by a semitone. We'll look more at different note choices and music theory with the next sample, but for now, this small semitone shift is working well. And it could also work on that last note. And once again, we could double up the phrase and then mix up the notes that go up in the pattern for even more variety. So with this second sample, we've seen how to get more variation with longer phrases by changing note lengths, velocities and pitches, as well as adding extra notes. To watch the remainder of this tutorial, as well as get hold of all the bass samples and MIDI patterns, become a Producer Tech member by signing up for the free 14-day trial.